Trailblazers. We are less than a week away until Honkai Star Rail's release day, and I am like two characters off finishing my standard banner review series. Time flies when you have nothing to do. So, today's video is going to be on everyone's favourite Xenoblade Chronicles looking golden boy. I want to say Jeopard. It's Gepard, but Jeopard. Anyway, Gepard is an ice element AoE shielder of the preservation path. We do get two shielders as free-to-play players when the game launches. I'm not gonna lie to you, friends. As a shielder, he is really great at what he does. Our other AoE shielder, Fire MC, is just nowhere near as efficient as him. I mean, their shields are good, but you'll see as we go through today, Gepard's shields are just T-H-I-C-C thick. Now, Gepard's character design is it's very traditional paladin of what you'd like, expect to see, someone who can deal a bit of damage, but the main focus is shielding or taking hits for his allies. As usual, I'm going to review his kit, I'm going to include his traces and idol ones in that section, I'm going to follow this up with a breakdown of the best builds for launch, and also provide a review of some team synergy and potential team comps, so you can make the most out of your Paladin Gepard pull. With all that said, let's get into it. Also, TY very much for all the views. Um, my Bailu video got like 100 views in one day. TYSM. Like I say, Gepard's kit gives you that very traditional paladin slash knight class vibe. His normal attack and skill deal damage, while his ult and technique apply a team-wide shield that scales off of his defense. Additionally, through his talent and traces, he has a form of taunt and self-sustain to keep him in the fight as a good peel option for your squishier allies, keeping your damage dealers unaffected by damage. To understand how all this interacts, let's get into the kit breakdown, starting with his core kit. As always, all percent modifiers are subject to change on launch next week, and I've provided a benchmark, the normal, blah, 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 blah. Basically, I'll say the level 9 and level 13 modifiers because of the maximums with idolons, but percentages may change next week. Don't worry about it. Running through his kit, let's start with his normal attack, the Fist of Conviction. It's a single target attack, dealing 130% of Gepard's attack to a single enemy at level 9. As always, not much to say on this one. It's your basic attack for skill point generation when he's got nothing else to do. His skill, Intimidating Strike, deals ice damage equal to 230% of Gepard's attack to a single enemy with a 65% chance to freeze the enemy for one turn. If an enemy is frozen, they cannot take action and will take ice DLT equal to 57.5% of Gepard's attack each turn. The damage that you can get from this skill is nice, but he's not edging towards being like a damage dealer or sub DPS by any shape or form. You want to note that going forward that everything else will scale off of defense. So while we have these two attack NA and skill, we're going to be like focusing all of the build into his defense and his shields, which we will explain now. So Gepard's ult, the Enduring Bulwark, applies a shield to all allies for an energy cost of 100, absorbing damage equal to 67.2% of Gepard's defense plus a flat amount of damage equal to 267. Essentially, let's say that the 67.2% scaling was equal to 200 damage, then the shield would absorb 200 damage plus 267 damage, so 467 in total. His technique, Camaraderie, will apply a shield to all allies, absorbing damage equal to 24% of Gepard's defense plus 92 flat amount for two turns. It's just a preemptive shield to get the battle going, nothing to write home about it's you know gonna give you a chance to get your all up finally gepard's talent unyielding will when struck by a killing blow instead of being incapacitated his hp will restore up to 57.5 percent of his max hp this effect's only going to trigger once per battle and it's worth noting that it's not technically him dying so something like a bailu revival won't take priority over this basically gepard will stop himself from dying once but then the revival could come in at a second down Overall, you've seen his base kit that he's got a lot to consider because you'll want decent enough defense for him to tank hits as well as some survivability through HP, and you might feel obligated on just looking at this on its own to play with some attack stats to get some full kit coverage, but it's definitely worth checking out the rest of his kit, the traces, where everything kind of sits, to see how this ends up being more balanced because you are going to want to stack defense on him even though his shield only comes out through his ultimate. His shield is kind of where the main core, like, Gepard ultimateness, stunningness, greatness comes from. So let's segue into traces. For his first major trace, Integrity, Gepard has a higher chance to be attacked by enemies. If you don't know, this will improve his already high 150 base taunt stat, making him more likely to be the recipient of damage from an enemy. Really obvious, it just keeps damage away from your squishier allies. So his second major trace, Commander, it's a bit of a situational one because it's kind of limited in uses per battle, basically when his talent triggers, so the self-revive, his energy will be restored to 100%, so the next turn he'll have a ultimate ready to cast, so the party-wide shield, but obviously this is once per turn because there's a restriction on his talent only being able to trigger once per turn, so, you know, it kind of gives him good combat potential once at the brink of death, but you also have to get him to the brink of death. 
Finally, his third major trace, Fighting Spirit. It boosts his attack by 35% of his current defense every turn. It doesn't stack, it just refreshes. It's an interesting one because you can stack defense boost on him, which will in turn raise his attack. In my opinion, kind of nice little offensive boost for him, especially if you're piling the defense on him, which is what you're going to want to do. You don't need to invest in attack stats to still get some worth out of his NA and skill. Finally, for his minor trace slash stat boost, we're looking at a total of 22.4% ice damage bonus, 12% effect res, and 12.5% to his defense. It's exactly what I'd expect to see on here for those kind of minor efficient stats. With kit and traces covered, I really don't like doing idol ones. I say this every video. Insert copy text here about how impossible they're going to be on a standard banner due to the massive odds being stacked against you. However, with every other standard character, I've been like, oh, you don't need to worry about idol ones. Nothing here is high priority if it's quite fun, whatever. But with Gepard, all of his Eidolons offer nice boost to his kit in the order that they're set out, and so it wouldn't hurt as much with Gepard if you accidentally picked up one or two of these as a repeat off rate pull on the standard banner. His E1, due diligence, his skill has a 35% increased chance to freeze, which totals it up to 100% base chance now because it starts off with a 65%. So depending on all the effects percent pieces at play, you might have lined yourself up to always freeze on skill cast. So already off the bat, like for example, E1, not a bad pickup. His E2, Lingering Cold, after a skill frozen enemy is unfrozen, he will reduce their speed by 20% for one turn, aka as long as they've been frozen by Kapard's skill and not someone who's had their ice weakness toughness bar reduced to zero. His E3 is the usual skill and talent plus two, with the ult plus two and basic attack plus one being in his E5. Again, this is the standard for these E3 and E5s. His E4, Faith Moves Mountains. When Gepard is in battle, all allies' effect resistance is increased by 20%. It's a really easy idol one to understand. It's probably the only effect based idol one that doesn't jump out at me when reading his idol ones. Finally, there's E6, Unyielding Determination. When he triggers his talent, so the saving grace from a fatal attack, he will strike next and gets another 50% boost to the health recovered. If you end up with his E6 with his ult trace, it basically means that once per battle, when he's about to be incapacitated, he will live with full health and then on the next turn like immediately next turn so not his next turn but the next turn of the battle he'll then also be able to cast the aoe shield really maximizing his comeback potential overall kit wise he's a great shielder and he has the right amount of sustain to keep him alive and functioning now do take note that he has no party-wide damage reduction so everyone taking a hit through Gepard's shield will take full damage but on single target attacks due to the taunts in his kit and the stats he's more likely to take the brunt of it which means that Gepard has a good shielding slot efficiency his shields are nice and big and most enemies are going to go straight for him when they're dealing focused attacks. It means that having Gepard could free up a healer slot in many comps and you can go run a lot more offensive, which we will see about later on in the team comps. For now, the focus here is to boost up his ability with the build section. Reading his kit, there's a lot of defense scaling in it, so as we approach these builds now, we want to factor that into his kit for build optimization and efficiency. With his kit explained, the next step is to focus on light cones and relics. So other than his technique, his shield is locked to his ultimate. So we're going to want to dent out the shield as much as possible so that it has a reasonable uptime because you can't always get it off. As such, we're going to want to optimize this by building defense on him while bearing in mind that he will also receive a boost for his attack for doing this. Starting with light cones, I'm going to work our way up from the free to play options. So to start, we do have a three star weapon he can take advantage of. Amber, it will increase Gapard's defense by 16% at base level, and when his HP is less than 50% of his max HP, he will get a further 16% boost to his defense. This weapon works well on Gapard because his sustain is kind of all or nothing, so you're at the brink of death, so you might find yourself sitting in that lower scale of the 50% HP mark for a lot of the battle time, so a 32% defense increase at base is nothing to laugh at for a 3-star weapon. Now there is a 4-star option on Gapard I really like as well, and he's featured in the artwork with his older sister Serval, but... The weapon, Landau's Choice, increases his taunt and offers damage reduction of 16% at base. Now, you get more out of this weapon the more copies you have because you can get up to 24% damage reduction, but you may also think, where is the defense boost in this? However, I did note before, Gepard doesn't have any damage mitigation in his base kit, and we are going to make up a lot of defense stats in our relics. So, me thinking about this weapon, given the fact that it offers a flat damage reduction and directs damage towards him away from your squish your allies, it actually synergizes really well with his kit, and I wouldn't mind taking the defense miss for this 4-star weapon. Of course, we should cover 5-star options, namely his signature weapon, Moment of Victory. Obviously, it's made for him, it's stacked by a base level, it increases the wearer's defense by 24%, his effect hit rate by 20%, it increases the chance for the wearer to be attacked by enemies, so more taunt. When the wearer is attacked, it increases their defense by additional 24% until the end of the wearer's turn. It's just stacked. It has taunt, the effect hit rate for your freeze is there, you're looking at 24% defense on your turn, with a 48% defense increase on the enemy's attacking turn as long as they hit him. It is obviously the best option for him, I can't really poke holes with this one. Maybe I could say, well, there's no damage mitigation, but... I'm kind of reaching with 
this one. I like this weapon, and if I had Gapard and maimed him, this would be a candidate for me to use my shop currency on pulling. That said, weapon choices, I will recommend the 4-star choice, Landau's choice, as a good pick for him. I do think it edges forward over Amber for the damage mitigation side of things, but he can wear any of the three perfectly fine. I think the 5-star option is only necessary, like I say, for maining purposes, but he 1 million percent performs fine with a 3 or 4-star weapon. His kit and shields are just so big that the weapon's kind of, as long as you get the defense or damage mit, you're good to go. With light cones covered, we can talk relics. Now, I don't think the light cone choice will impact this too much. I did note that we can stack defense percent on him in relics if we opt for damage mitigation. But that said, I think defense percent is going to be the way forward regardless of whichever light cone you go for. And it's going to be your main stat choice. Any defense percent increase you get on him is going to run up massively because his base defense is 654. And you're looking at 396 to 595 defense from a 4 to 5 star weapon of the ones I offered. So you're dealing with just a chunk of numbers from the get go to multiply and then filter into his attack if you remember how his kit works. Gapard does have two major sets he can benefit from so I'm going to go into detail in both of them. One is his more cannon set but I think in terms of AoE ally shielding you get benefit from the second set so it's worth going into each set separately because it depends on whether you want bigger shields for your allies or if you want more sustain. So the first one, Guard of Wuthering Snow is his cannon set just from design wise. The two piece effect reduced damage taken by 8%, so a form of damage mitigation, but the four piece effect is a form of sustain. So at the beginning of the turn, if the wearer's HP is equal to or less than 50% of their max HP, restore HP equal to 8% of their max HP and regenerate five energy. Obviously with this set, what you're gonna be getting is five energy per turn closer to his ultimate. His ultimate is where you cast your AOE shield. And then the 8% HP is just a form of obvious self-sustain you can play Gapard in quite offensive focus teams. After not running a healer, this set is going to let you get Gapard healing up without letting him get too close to actually needing to trigger his talent. Additionally, we also have a more tank slash shield heavy focused 4 piece set Gapard can make use of, which is the Knight of Purity set. The two set effect increases defense by 12% and the four set increases the max damage that can be absorbed by the shield created by Gapard by 20%. The four piece is just so nice on him because a benefit he's passing on to his allies by increasing the threshold of the shield itself is just a really decent major set to have on him depending on if you want to run like a full tank build and then have a healer in the team to keep him sustained. For his planetary ornaments or the minor relic set, the below bog of architects is another set made for him the two piece set effect increases the wearer's defense by 15 percent and when the wearer's effects hit rate is 50 percent or higher the wearer gains an additional 15 percent defense the last part tiny bit conditional depending on your build but the 15 percent defense increase is pretty sweet deal on its own bear in mind if you have his sig the light cone you're getting 20 percent effect hit rate from that as well not a bad two piece for stat recommendations, you're looking for defense across the board. I would recommend defense percent as your main stat for all four of your main stat pieces, so body, feet, plane, house, fit, and rope. With the rope, you may want to consider energy regen rate on him because his ult is the way you apply your shield, so you know, bear that in mind. But at least while the game's new at launch, it's going to take us a while to get some really good down, strong, strong level artifacts anyway, so just defense percent's fine. For substats, you want to focus defense percent, speed, and then HP percent in that order with effect hit rate where you can also grab it. That, that'll be too, like, you know, stringent with it. He, he, he's just a shielder. Um, for supports, I don't think you need to swap out your feet main stat for speed, where Gapard's considered. I think defense percent is still workable on him, but again, interchange on what you have when the game's launched, I honestly don't think effect hit rate is worth its salt as a main stat. So yeah, just, you know, maybe four to three defense percent main pieces and then energy regen rate if you have it. For builds, he's pretty easy as long as you're stacking defense up, you're not going to go wrong because that's going to be the way he gets the most benefit out of the shield he passes on to his allies. It's just a great way of segueing into team synergy and comps when we talk about allies. So team synergy, not to keep referencing my Bailu video, it was like the third time, sorry, but what I said there holds true here. Your supports are kind of flex slots that you can factor in depending on the content, as some content might cause you to forego a tank or a healer, or you might want to element shift your tank into something else like a foul tra trailblazer depending on the content, you might want to, you know, require the aggro redraw of March 7th, it really depends. That said, Gapard is a very good AoE tank with the strongest shields right now, who, in my opinion, he's just so great at what he does, so I do have some team commentary ideas to get the creative juices flowing and for us ready to go if you pull him. So team one here, what you're looking at is peak offense, no defense. Dan Hung is your single target damage dealer. He's going to be dealing the damage with support or sub DPS from an AoE damage dealer, which could be supplemented by Servo. Both Dan Hung and Servile are self-sufficient damage dealers, so Asta's job here is just to prop up their attack stats and use up the skill points. Now, 
There is some fault element variability in here, depending on what you want to focus down a bit. You could swap Servile for Herta for the double ice, but you might lose some synergy if any as ice allies compete with Capard's skill freeze. That's also Xinguai as the other free to play. Did I say that? as the other free to play unit, her kit is kind of complicated and she might compete with Asta for skill point consumption. So for newer users, she might be a harder pick, but she is interchangeable for the AOE damage, as long as you're getting that kind of consistent damage from someone like Dan Hung, and that is being well supplemented by your AOE damage dealer, you can't really go wrong, like I say. There's no healer here because Gapard's defensive shields are so tight, you don't need to stack up defensive utility in my opinion. Again, content specific though. Now, spicing things up outside the free-to-play units that we have, I've got Arlen coming in on the damage side. He works so well with Gapard because he needs to play at a continuous loss to his health, and so you want a reliable, strong shield to avoid him getting one-shotted later on in the battle. I mean, he takes, like, I think it's, like, 15% of his health to, like, boost up his damage, and then he also benefits from ha having low health, so, you know, something like a healer can work kind of anti-synergistic. I know I just recommended him on the Bailu video, but it really depends on how you're looking at it. But with Gapard, you know, they're a match made in heaven, you can just keep him alive while he continues to kind of self remove his health around. Then, you know, I've got Tingyun here as a support ally because she's going to open up your damage dealer's capabilities, giving the attack boost and damage mul multipliers to your island, or obviously another damage dealer you have. Alternatively, you could use Paler here, mostly because she reduces the enemy's defense. Again, what I'm doing here is I'm channeling up the capabilities of my damage dealer through Gapard, and he's letting me do that thanks to his shield. Here, any of your AoE damage dealers would also work well, depending on who you're running. You could even throw in Sampo in this team. I've not spoke about him before, he's kind of more of a technical damage dealer hybrid, and so while he won't replace your main damage dealer, he's more of a sub damage dealer that you can run because Gapard is covering bases with the main support functionality. Obviously, for four whale comps, you could pull in any five-star characters you want that cover the main damage rolls. I refrain from covering future gacha characters, even if they were in the CBT, because we don't have them. So your usual main damage dealers like Yan Ching or Sele or Throne Jin Wang could, Jin Huang could also supplement that role with your utility, and you would be fine. I'm not saying like don't run a healer at all by the way, but some content will require it. But the focus of the team synergies when I'm building teams of Gapard is that you can really show off how Gapard lets you play much more offensively by stacking offense. If you stack him up with high defense, your damage dealer should be fine, his shielders are going to be massive. So like I say, a lot more flexibility to not kind of wheel out the usual put Natasha here character mode. Overall, I really like Gapard. I don't think he's a bad pick. I know we do get two tanks when we tank shield us, whatever you want to call them, but he edges so far in front of them, in my opinion, that he's just too much of a good unit to be sad about. And like I say, he opens a lot more flexibility in your team comps, where different battles that would require a more offensive team comp, you you get that kind of flexibility with Gapard. Also, as I mentioned, in the relic side of things, he's pretty easy to build, throw in a lot of defense percent, whatever substats you can get. If you end up with a speed item here or an energy regen rate and you don't want to keep farming, throw them on him. It's not going to be in the world. So he's kind of a nice character just to kind of build and then push to one side so you can focus on building up your other characters. He's not too particular. I rate him quite highly. I know he is rated quite highly in kind of the different guide websites rankings. If you get Kapad, be buzzed. He's a great shielder. I don't know what else to tell you. Anyway, that's everything from me today. I hope you enjoyed this video. There's not long left until the game's released. If you did like this video, please feel free to like and subscribe. Sorry. Thanks and goodbye. And maybe I'll see you in the next one. Because there will be a next one.